All right, welcome to the diversity module. What we're gonna do here is talk about graphing. So I've shared with you my Excel spreadsheet. Uh, this spreadsheet includes the, as you can see, the one, two, three, four different sheets. The fourth sheet is the insect study. This was actually collected by some CMU students. Um, and I'm gonna do this one for the diversity example for you. So you don't have to do it, but you can do the others. now. The first component here for a diversity is to make the graph. This graph is formally called a rank abundance distribution. Um, and I should probably just title it that. There you go, Cana Creek rank abundance distribution. Abundance distribution. So this is a particular type of graph. The reason I'm spending time doing this is because it has a tradition, it has a format, it has a look. And you can't quite get it perfect in Excel, but we can get pretty close. So um, this is what we use. This graph is the fundamental communication of all diversity data. If I could just show this picture for an ecosystem, I can tell an incredible number of things about that ecosystem just by looking at this graph. What you will see on the x-axis here is the rank of species. So I have not put species names in here right now. You could, if you could do that using Excel, but you just have the one is the most common, two is the second most common, three is the third most common, and so on down the line. For my butterfly communities, I have 130 species, so this looks like a very long descending line. The other thing you'll notice at the vertical axis here is in log base 10. What that does is compress, compresses that vertical axis so that when one or two species are super abundant like they have thousands of individuals you can see them on the same graph and you can resolve differences between individuals that have only one two or three individuals at the same time you have some species that have a thousand or two thousand individuals that is very common in large data sets of insects and birds for that matter so this picture is what i want you to get to let's go through and see how to do it the data that I provided you looks like this data up here in the corner. You'll see that the species list is on the left side. In this case, these are actually orders of insects, of aquatic insects captured by nets in, the, in these locations, Cana Creek and the Colorado River. I have organized your lists so that the first location has all of its things first, and the second location um, has its unique things listed last. And so what that means is that the second location, in this case, has everything the first location does plus another one. This makes it easy for you to separate the two data. Now, the pooled community you will need for doing your uh, alpha, beta, gamma diversity work. And so the pooled diversity is listed here. And you can see that the pooled diversity is the straight up sum of each of the taxa, right, or species, in this case, mayfly is the order, you just add them together for all the communities and you look at one giant community, all right? So I've now broken the data apart. The easy way to do that was to go here. I could just collect uh, Cana Creek like this, copy, and you would paste it and it would show up down here. I inserted a row in this area and that row, I'm gonna make the rank label order. That just makes it easier to make the graphs. There's more space. So you then type in, click, 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 um, rank one, rank two, rank three, rank four, all right? You could easily do fill in if you had a lot of species. Um, the other species, of course, don't fit exactly. So I had to copy this group here, uh, control C, and I came down and I pasted their abundances here next to the correct order. I left a space in the middle for the rank, and now I have five species. So now I have two different communities that I can graph, all right? I've shown you the graph. I'll show you what happens in Excel. I'm using a Mac, so uh, PC will be similar. Let's go in and see. I'm just gonna select the actual raw data in the middle. Seems to be the best way to do it. I'm then gonna go up to the top of the screen. Oh dear, my... Uh... Hmm, not sure how to get rid of my... Uh... Ah, that's pain. All right, let's try again, Tom. Maybe you can, there, I gotta drag this. My Zoom controls are in the way up there. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to insert. 
uh, the straight up way here. I'm going to insert a uh, scatter plot, okay? And I'm going to choose that scatter plot there. Now it comes out, it has a lot of things I don't like about it, but it does have my species listed on the bottom, my rank, and it has my abundance on the vertical axis. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the grid lines. I don't like them. So there's two ways of doing this. The easiest way is to move across the chart until the grid lines have the word on the screen and then double click there. And then I'm just going to click delete. Um, there are other ways of getting rid of vertical. Oh yeah, delete. Those are gone. Now I got rid of my grid lines. All right. Um, now my dots, they're okay. I could make them bigger. I'm not going to connect them. I'm, this is not tradition to connect them because they're not actually connected dots. Um, sometimes I have problems with my x-axis. So I'm going to look at, oh, roll around till I get over horizontal x-axis, double click, and then you'll see it has an option to format that axis. Now, um, this one looks pretty good, actually. It seems to be learning from what I've been doing. So when I first started, it had 0.5s in there. I don't want 0.5s. I want whole numbers. And I want, actually, I'm going to have it terminate at 5.0 to save some space. So we'll have the maximum at 5.0. And then we're pretty much done with the horizontal x-axis. The vertical axis, I'm going to double click on the vertical. Let's take a moment to remember what you can click on. You can click, or in, in your PC, this would be a right click. You can click on a data point and get this kind of menu. You can click in the middle of a graph and get this kind of menu, not the same menu, right? You can get, you can click on the uh, actual axes and get a different menu, all right? So here I'm gonna format the vertical axis over here. And when I format the vertical axis, um, everything looks pretty fine over there. It starts at zero. It should start at zero and it should go up. I'm going to ask it to do logarithmic scale and it's by default in base 10. So that's what I want. I want log base 10 uh, logarithmic scale and that's tradition for a rank abundance distribution. Now I want to label my axes. I have to go to do this. I go to chart design at the top of the page. Click on that and I add chart element. You can also right click using your PC sometimes to add chart elements. I'm going to add axis titles on the horizontal. And so the axis title there, I'm gonna make this title, this is very specifically species rank. That's the title, okay? I'm also gonna add another element, which in this case is gonna be the vertical axis. And this is gonna, I'm gonna write in here, just select everything to get rid of it. I'm gonna write um, log base 10, abundance. Great. Just trying to move it up there. That's log base 10 of abundance. Uh, and now I can chart my chart title. Uh, this is going to be, oh, I probably used the Cana Creek data again. Didn't, no, I didn't. Good. I used the uh, Colorado River data, I think. or five items, yep, Colorado River. Colorado River, rank abundance, distribution. Okay, that's what these should look like. We actually shrink them up a bit because they don't need to be that long. Uh, when there's a hundred species, we have all the species are, they actually looks more like a line. So now we've got these two guys. Now what I'm going to ask you to do with these is copy them out of here and paste them into a Word document side by side underneath the table that has all the diversity statistics. And that is how you make the rank abundance distribution graphs. You can now compare community. I'm going to say this, you look at this community and you can see right now that it's more even up here in Cana Creek than it is over here in the Colorado River. It's just not as even in the Colorado River, even though there are more taxa, in this case, orders. Now, that's going to generate different diversity indices. Remember, diversity indices maximize when they are even, and they also increase with the number of species, but evenness is a lot more important than the number of species. So probably I'm expecting to see a higher Shannon Wiener Index for this Cana Creek than for the Colorado River. Knowing the Colorado River is more disturbed than Cana Creek, that's not too surprised. surprising. So that's what I will expect to see there. All right, so uh, let's 
wrap this up. Thanks for listening and thanks for making a great graph.